Good morning, traders. Really excited to have you guys here today. Today we are going over five reasons, I believe, why most people are inconsistent with their day trade. I think this is really going to help you guys out. Let's get straight into the video. Number one, uh, they don't allow time to become their best friend. In fact, they allow time to be their enemy. See, most people want to get rich quick, and so they open up a very large account. They blow themselves up way too fast, way too quick. Rather than starting out paper trading, starting out with a small account, that gives you enough flexibility to learn how to trade while losing minimal amounts of money. There's a saying in Wall Street that goes, the stock market makes poor people rich and rich people poor. The stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. So in fact, this relates not only to your time as a trader overall, but it really relates to your intraday trading, your day trading as well, your patience or your lack of patience, your impatience in the market. What I always advise new traders to do is to either start small, and a lot of people want to go to CMAG very quickly. That's where I'm at. That's where a lot of us are. Uh, but we've been trading for a while. A lot of us have, and you got to consider the commissions uh, and the fees, that sort of thing. What I did, what a lot of people do, is you start out with a small account. It could be with Webull, could be somewhere else, think or swim. Uh, just open up at a paper trading account and learn how to trade. Learn the basics. Learn the technical analysis of trading. There's three different types of analysis. You got the technical analysis. You got fundamental analysis. Know what news does what. And then you have trader analysis. Understand volume. Understand what type of volume can do what on each individual stock relative to its float, relative to its market cap, relative to its past chart history. So there's a lot of different things to learn. And that's why it's very important to start out with minimal amounts of money, what they call disposable money if there is such a thing disposable money money that you're not going to need uh for you know your rent for your electric bill this sort of thing you don't want to use sacred money because that's also going to heighten your emotions when you're trading and we want to eliminate the emotions as much as possible not have heightened emotions because remember patience is huge when trading now let's go to step number two the second reason i believe that uh, most traders do not become consistently profitable is because they become bag holders. They bag their losers and they cap their winners too early. So they're in a stock. It's going against them. They're scaling. They're adding, 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 adding into oblivion. Uh, and before you know it, they are a long-term investor when in fact they were just trying to you know, trade the short term. They were trying to be in and out really quick. They were actually trying to scalp it. They were trying to scalp this trade and ended up becoming a bag holder, a baggie is what I call them. Uh, turn into a long-term investor and now, you know, they're swinging. <laughs> now, they're, now they're swing trading, uh, turning from a day trader to a swing trader. So it's really important, guys, uh, to maximize our profits and to minimize our losses. So we got to be very rigid with our rules, predefining our risk. Very rigid with the rules, as Mark Douglas said, but flexible with our profit expectations. Uh, and I have actually a hotkey script built to kind of do this for me. It's kind of training wheels, even for me after doing this four years. So what I'll do is I'll enter a stock, and immediately upon entering the stock, I have predefined risk. And this, it'll get me out of the stock if it hits that. And profit-wise, I can scale out along the way, allowing for maximum uh, profit potential. Being patient in the trade with your profits. You can be impatient, though, as far as locking up the trade is concerned. Taking that risk. Understanding the risk. Predefining that risk before you enter a trade. If we're not predefining our risk, we're going to end up blowing up very, very quickly. Uh, adding to these positions, holding long term, turning into bag holders. Uh, this is why it's very important, guys. Minimize our losses, maximize our profit potential. Let's go to step number three. Step number three, I threw in here because I've seen this over the course of my trading journey. A lot of people depending on alerts. I think it's really important to learn how to become an independent trader. Now, that does not mean you cannot learn from other traders. I actually advise. Traders to learn from everybody out there, not just one guy, not just one teacher, not just me, not just him, not just her. Find someone who's been trading for a while. Make sure you know how they trade. Find out about their edge. Find out more about it. Find out their risk parameters. Find everything out about how they trade and do that with everybody you can. It's really important to understand how everyone trades. I mean, we all each independently have our own personalities, our own ways of trading. Some of us are more long bias, short bias, 
or some of us like to focus on certain patterns that we've seen. It's all this combined experience over time that's going to turn into your gut. Your gut's going to essentially be able to trade for you eventually. It's kind of going to be intuition in a way. You're going to learn how to trade, and by seeing these over and over and over again, all these stocks, you're going to pretty much know what's the good trades, what are the bad trades. It's this combined experience. But this takes me back to step number one, and that's why it's so important to allow time to be your best friend and not your enemy. See, if we blow ourselves out of the water, we start too heavy too quickly, we try to get rich quick, and we do that too fast, what's going to inevitably happen is you know, we're not going to learn this. We're not going to have that combined experience. We're just going to be in and out so quick, blow up an account, kind of beyond remedy. So where we cannot proceed you know, in our trading career. So that's very important. Learn from everybody so that you can become an independent trader. Don't just solely rely on alerts. Let's go to step four. The fourth reason I believe people do not become consistent in their trading is because they use inconsistent sizing and inconsistent risk across the board. So if you're trading XYZ uh, 500 shares and then you trade another stock 1,000 shares, but they're around the same price, that's inconsistent risk. You're sizing in more on one than the other. Now, it may be a better setup, and that's something we can talk about. See, at the poker table, for instance, if you get pocket pair of aces, you might want to involve a little bit more risk than if you had pocket pair of tens or pocket pair of kings. With that being said, I do believe there may be some instances where we can apply a little bit more risk to the trade. But most, in the majority of the time, what we need to do is have consistent risk, consistent sizing across the board. And there's a way to do this in DOS. How you can set up the script is, okay, if I want to go with a $1,000 position, I can do $1,000 divided by the price of the stock. And so if the price is $10, $20, $30, it's going to get me the same consistent sizing on each and every one of those tickers. It's going to get me consistent sizing. And guess what? If I have 2% risk applied to the trade as well, I'm going to have the exact same risk as well. So we need to have consistent sizing and risk across the board. If you're risking $500 here, $200 there, $50 bucks there, you're going to have random results. And guess what? Random trading, random risk is going to equal random results. Let's go to step five. The fifth and final reason I believe that 90 percenters do not become consistently profitable is simply because they give up. Now, I've been doing this over four years now, and I've seen that. Uh, I think everybody can become profitable. I really do. It's the, the 10 percenters are the ones who don't give up. Every single time they fall, they get right back up until they figure it out. It requires a lot of hard work. It requires a lot of discipline. It requires that risk management. It requires becoming an independent trader, independent of alerts. It requires a lot of things that we've gone over. But ultimately, the biggest thing is you always get back up and you press forward and you march on. Uh, and you will find consistency and profitability over time. That is inevitable. It's going to happen. Just keep working very, very hard at it and you will figure out how to do it. But when you're initially starting out trading, what you got to do is figure out how not to trade. It's like Thomas Edison with the light bulb. He found out a thousand ways how not to make the light bulb. He didn't fail a thousand times. You're not failing either. So don't figure out how not to trade with large amounts of money. Figure out how to trade with a minimal amount of money, disposable income that you can lose so that you can figure out how to trade and become consistently profitable. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button for me. Hit the subscribe button, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. We'll see you all next time.